Hi everyone, it's Neve here. Welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be doing some collaging over some abstract mark making, which is basically my happy place. So I'm starting out in my big Dilusions journal and I'm just playing around with some new distress paints I had. So I think it's Salvage Patina and Sketchbook. Not sure, the, the newest ones. <laughs> It's terrible um, I should really know um, because I was a bit heavy-handed with my paint um, I've just got my junk journal next to me that I can sort of scrape the rest of it out into so I quite like using the distress paints they work really well but they are a little bit more fluid than I'm used to so I put out what I think is enough paint and it ends up being too much it does go a lot further than you would expect it to but you can see it's got a beautiful dry uh, beautiful dry it's got a beautiful matte finish to it which is really cool. So this is one of my favourite stencils. It's a Stencil Girl stencil. I think it's a Car Carolyn Doobie stencil. It's just a whole heap of circles in different shapes and sizes. It's just so versatile. It's great patterns. It's great for reductive stenciling. So when you wipe through it, um, I'm sure you've seen it lots and lots on my page. The reason I'm doing this all over the page is because the background was quite patchy with the colours. Um, by putting something unifying over the top, so I've got white all over it, it sort of ties it all together a little bit. Uh, it doesn't need to be a circle stamp, stamp, so it can be anything you want over the background. So once I've done this, I thought, oh, I'm having fun with this, so I'm going to do some mark making. So I'm using some contrasting colours. So I've used the blues in the background, so now I'm going to use um, some yellow. And I'm just using different brushes to do this. So... You know, I'm using a more flat brush to get those big bits of yellow on it. Now I'm using a smaller brush to do sort of a dotty pattern um, using the blushing. Not really thinking about where I'm putting it. I had an idea that I was probably going to put a magazine image over this. I think I'd cut one out earlier for another page and hadn't used it, so I sort of knew it was sitting around. Um, <clears throat> so I had a bit of an idea that I would put probably something over that bottom left hand corner. So once I've sort of done some of the paint marking now I'm going in with my Posca paint pens or um, outline some of those circles going with a big black pen and doing some big doodled scallops getting really handy with my really thick Posca paint pen and um, creating some line work on it as well so um, sometimes you know, having big thick lines on things can really help tie it together. It just gives a little bit of a different effect on the page. When I'm thinking, uh, quite often you'll see me get a paint pen, or not paint pen out, um, my heat gun out. Usually because obviously I'm working with acrylic paints and having dry layers to work on is really handy anyway. But it also gives me that little bit of thinking time. Um, so... It doesn't hurt by having a dry area to work on, so it just gives your, well, sorry, it gives my brain that little bit of stop and wait and think and have a look and see what I needed to add to it. So you can see I've got the um, image here that I was going to put on that I already cut out. She was sort of at a funny, not a funny angle, but I liked the angle that it was going at, so it sort of fitted nicely across the page. And one of the things that I'm not very precious about when I do stuff like this is you know I really like that background as a whole but the fact that I've just stuck an image over it really doesn't bother me all that much um, it's you know just the way it is basically what I did decide I wanted to do was I wanted to make she sort of had flowers in her hair already but it was too hard to fussy cut around so I'd cut them off so I decided I'd make my own little flower crown so this is the Dina Wakeley one of the new stamp sets it had a flower on it um, and I'm just using some watercolors not being very careful um, just sort of spreading the ink paint around <laughs> getting some different shading on it um, I'm working wet on wet so it is sort of blending together a little bit and obviously you could use any medium to color these in I just want to be quick and fast and use something that wouldn't take too long to go. So I'm also putting in some leaves, um, which obviously came with the stamp set, but I thought it might be handy to fill in any gaps as I was going around. 
So again, just drying it off as I go. You'll notice the colors I've used in the flowers are similar to the colors I've used in the background. Um, I don't think that was necessarily intentional, um, but it was handy. So if you are stuck for the colors that you're going to use, repeating colors on your page is usually a really great option. So I had those yellows and sort of pink shades in the background. Um, so by repeating those, that was, it was always going to work on that page, if that makes sense. So now I'm just going in and working out how many flowers she needs in her head. Um, you can see I've sort of got the greenery there, filling it in. Um, and I'm quite pleased with how my little crown turned out. The um, only issue is... <laughs> Um, remembering where they all go back in in the end. I also decided I actually wanted to make the black lines a little bit darker on this. I could have re-stamped over the top of it um, but I chose just to use my black spiller or pencil and just draw over it. It's just as quick and easy as trying to line up the stamps and re-stamp it. Um, but if you're really not 100% sure, because it was fussy cut down to the size of the stamp, um, it would have been fairly easy to stick the um, cut image over the top of the stamp in the right area so um, it's not too difficult to find. I'm now just gluing down the leaves and filling in the little gap areas and when I finished I decided I wanted to add some more colour to her clothing. So again I'm using similar colours that I've used in the background. Um, so I've sort of got that turquoisey blue I'm just outlining all the lines that you could see on um, her top and then just adding in the extra, putting in rosy cheeks, putting in a bit of a winged eyeliner and eyelashes and one of the things I tend to always do with my magazine collages is, is to outline everything with a black pen. So the reason for that is it gives um, the image a more two-dimensional, almost a cartoony feel. It's just something I like. Um, if you look at a lot of magazine collage you tend to see a lot of people doing similar things it just sort of blends it together and the great thing about it is too it gives you a chance to draw over shapes um, and trace over them put your own art line work put your own hand to it I suppose so you're not just using a magazine image you've drawn over the top of it as well so you can see I've put in some of the black in her hair I'm putting in some of the gold of her hair um, none of this is necessary of course I could have just kept it as straight as the magazine image but um, I, I enjoyed my time doing this so if you're enjoying it why not I was struggling with her chin though I made it really dark so <laughs> just just be aware sometimes you can be a little bit heavy-handed with it all the only good thing about um, recoloring on magazine images is if you particularly want um, you know a color scheme to go you can sort of change lipsticks and change eyeshadows to match it all together so now i'm going in with a quote this is one of the um, snarky quotes from tim holtz i think and i'm just trimming it up um, to the size i want it so quite often these um, quotes are quite blocky and um, don't necessarily fit the way I want them to on the page so the fact that you can sort of cut them into the pieces that you want or cut them into strips you can place them where you want them to on the page so you can see in the close-up how that detail in the magazine works and um, the mark making in the background having that little black line around it and having the turquoise to add it all together just helps tie your piece together in the end so I hope you have a go at making an abstracty background, have a go, a bit of magazine collage over the top. You can't do it wrong, it's just doodling over the top of a magazine. Um, I'm sure you did it when you were a kid, so um, why not do it again when you're an adult? Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.